It is a great privilege for me to be able to talk on this topic, which I'm very passionate about, namely the, the introduction of coding and robotics in South African schools, and then our project that makes use of unplugged coding. Uh, this project forms has been part of a four-year collaboration between uh, our university and colleagues in Namibia, Mozambique, and Germany, known as the YES project. As a professor in computer science who often interacts with the employers of our graduates, I'm, I'm very aware that there's a desperate shortage of uh, software developers in South Africa and most of the world. COVID-19 has made this even worse since there's a, a more ever increasing need for new software. So our employers of our graduates are reporting that they seeing a upward trend because of COVID for the need of software developers. But talking coding and robotics in schools is not just about uh, producing software developers. The, this is a list of skills that have been identified that will be important for any employment with regards to the fourth industrial revolution. And you will see the ones that are bold, bold faced, namely creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, active learning, decision making, communication, as well as technology skills are all skills that can be entrenched and taught to learners through the use of coding and robotics. I think we are fortunate to have a, a president and some of his cabinet that understand the fourth industrial revolution and the skills needed to survive this revolution. Therefore, uh, our government is really leading the way in introducing coding and robotics in schools and seeing the need for it. But in, in addressing this, this need for software developers and teaching coding in schools, there are a few realities that we need to be very aware of. The first is that 16,000 of the 25,000 schools in South Africa currently do not have computer laboratories. An even more challenging reality is the fact that all across our country, we have dysfunctional computer laboratories in schools. And there are mainly two reasons for this. Firstly, uh, schools are often donated computer labs, but then they do not have the technical staff to maintain or even install these labs. And then secondly, the vast majority, may I say over 90% of our teachers are not trained to teach coding in schools. And therefore we have all these labs in schools across the country that are never used. As I travel through uh, especially rural areas, but also urban areas, I often come across this concept of fear of missing out. Um, I'm starting to call it anxiety of missing out because learners, parents, teachers and headmasters watch the news, read the newspapers and are very aware of the fourth industrial revolution, but they are also very aware of their own situation. So millions are scared that they would be missing out on the advantages of the fourth industrial revolution. Many of the, the tools that are suggested and often used regarding kids coding, uh, like Scratch and Lego Mindstorms, are unfortunately not practical for the vast majority of our schools. First of all, a, a package like Scratch would need a computer lab and often a, a connected computer lab where some of these robots could cost you over close to 7,000 Rand per robot, and that would imply about five learners interacting with it. So these tools, although they are brilliant tools and very effective, are not relevant to many of our schools. In March 2021, the Department of Basic Education published the draft curriculum for coding and robotics from grade R to nine. Uh, when looking at this curriculum, it becomes clear that schools would be dependent on having computer laboratories and some other technologies to be able to implement the curriculum. We therefore unfortunately believe that this curriculum, as it is currently, will only widen the digital divide instead of addressing it. 
And for this reason, uh, our project focuses on unplugged coding, which basically means coding without computers. Um, up till about three months ago, I honestly thought of this as the plan B for the schools that don't have computer labs. Until people have started talking to me, and especially a graduate that graduated 30 years ago, reminded me that in our student days, we often coded without computers. And then he also says that, for especially for primary school learners, it is probably better for them to be introduced to coding without sitting in front of a, a, a PC with blinking lights and all the other distractions. The other problem with having a computer lab is that it immediately excludes group work, where the, a very effective way of, of learning coding would be to work in groups. So we are saying unplugged coding is not plan B. It is plan A even for the resourced school. A very important aspect related to coding and, and robotics is the concept of computational thinking or problem solving. Someone once said you cannot translate from English to French if you cannot speak English. What this implies is that there's no sense in teaching learners to code if they do not have the ability to problem solve. And problem solving activities are very much unplugged activities. So we see this as part of the bigger picture. At Excelsior Primary School here in Kweberga, for example, the learners for the first few weeks of their coding club only had physical activities which taught them some problem solving skills. Our unplugged coding project driven from Nelson Mandela University uh, was initiated in 2017 and it has taken up uh, various aspects. In the rest of my presentation, I just would like to discuss some of the tools that we are using. Our flagship uh, project is the Tanks coding app, which was developed by Byron Batterson as a postgraduate project in 2017. The app has 35 levels in which uh, the learners need to move a tank to a destination. The following video will explain how it works. So in this scenario, the tank needs to move backwards, turn left, and then move forward twice. So the learner packs out the code using the puzzle pieces, takes a photo of the code. When happy that it's the correct puzzle pieces that were recognized, you press yes and your tank moves. Using the, the tanks game, we can introduce basic uh, coding concepts to learners, which includes the for and the while loop, for example. These are concepts that I would teach first years at university. It also uh, supports nested coding constructs, and with that comes the concept of optimization, writing more efficient code. The Tanks app is supported by our Tanks School Kit, which contains uh, seven lesson plans developed by Kelly Bush from Hudson Park Primary in East London, and it also includes instructional videos and other resources which empowers the school to start coding without the use of computers. A follow-up to the Tanks app is the Boats app, which is aimed at, at younger learners, uh, foundation phase, grade R to grade three, and it also has uh, a boat moving around on a grid. The Boats app has an additional environmental focus where learners are also introduced to facts about uh, marine pollution, as well as a renewable energy. It is also supported by the Boats School Kit, which contains 10 lesson plans and covers topics for foundation phase like what is coding, uh, sequencing, debugging, and some repeat uh, constructs. This is an example of one of the physical activities in the boat's lesson plans, where learners are physically interacting with a chair and a shoe, uh, introducing to them the, the concept of, of coding be, uh, being a list of instructions, which tells the computer what to do. 
On the right hand side, you see a photo of learners in Imtata being introduced to coding. The uh, boat's lesson plans also highlights the concept of instructions needed to do daily activities. This would be, for example, brushing your teeth, getting dressed, or making cereal. This photo is uh, from a, a primary school in Soweto, where the learners have a physical activity using the tiles in their classroom. Uh, if you spend a, a while just watching the body language, you can see that the learners are actually interacting considerably with this uh, activity. The Boats app also supports what we call virtual coding tournaments, which have been very effective, especially during the COVID uh, lockdown regulations, uh, where learners could play from anywhere, mostly from home, uh, they could play on their app and scores were submitted to a central database and this way we could have tournaments with learners participating from across the country. Since April last year we've probably had about 1,500 learners participating in various tournaments. Although we have not uh, really had any uh, problems in South Africa regarding the security theme of tanks, there is some, some sensitivity uh, across Africa as well as in Europe and consequently we've now developed the Rangers app which has the same coding complexity but the theme of game poaching in Africa and we really hope that this app will increase our footprint across the continent. While the players try to save the rhino from uh, game poachers by catching them in a net the game also provides a critical information about and statistics about game poaching across the continent. As I mentioned earlier, com computational thinking is critical when we're talking, talking coding and robotics. And we've developed two uh, sets of activities, one for foundation phase and one for the older learners, uh, which is basically a compendium of various computational thinking activities which teachers can do in the classroom. Since the beginning of 2021, we have put in a considerable effort to train teachers and other educators, people from NGOs or even staff from the Department of Basic Education. This has taken up uh, various formats. We've had 14 physical workshops across the country, as well as various online workshops. In total, I uh, guess we have reached close to a thousand educators with these training workshops. For exercise number two, the teachers have to move object A and B. The two objects must switch places. And for that to happen, the teachers have to write down the commands that control the robotic arm to move the objects. Let's see how to make this one. Right, down, you grab, grab, and then you go up, and then you go left, left, and then you number two. Now, Prof is the robotic arm, the teachers are the programmers. <laughs> the feedback received from teachers after the training was very encouraging. Uh, these are some of the reasons they mentioned why they found the training very useful. It demystified coding. They started to realize that they, that they don't need tech in their schools to teach coding. Some of them uh, admitted that they now know how to integrate coding in the class. It gave many self-confidence. They knew where to start. And they had the sense because they enjoyed the training themselves that their learners would also enjoy coding. The important aspect of all unplugged coding activities is that it's group work, where the learners play as a group and many other dynamics then also kick in. Uh, problem solving, communication, strategy, and it's always very energizing to see how groups work in this scenario. I've already mentioned the virtual boats tournaments, but with the Tanks app, we can also present physical coding tournaments 
We've had up to 120 learners participating in one tournament. The photo on the right is in at Alexander Road High School beginning of 2020. We are currently also working on a platform that would allow for virtual tanks coding tournaments. Since the schooling curriculum tends to already be very full, teachers really st often struggle to introduce coding as an additional topic during the normal school hours. So we are strongly encouraging schools and NGOs to start coding clubs outside of school. This could either be in the afternoon or over the weekends. We, for example, know of one coding club that meets on Sunday afternoons. A practice that we are really supporting is the concept of coding evangelists. Uh, this would be young people, sometimes unemployed youth, that are trained to present unplugged coding workshops and then they go into schools where the teachers are already too overburdened to do these coding activities. So what you see here are uh, coding evangelists active in the Kunu area near Mtata as well as in Kwanabutle near Kariha. But it is also very possible to include unplugged coding into the official curriculum whether this is in technology lessons or whether it's incorporated into other subjects. There is space for unplugged coding in the official uh, school time. A very important aspect of this project uh, regarding its sustainability is the financing of the different uh, toolkits most of the schools that we are targeting are obviously from the disadvantaged communities and they therefore do not have the, the financial resources to even buy our coding kits, which are relatively cheaper than any other tools. So we've been very reliant on corporates to sponsor the distribution of coding kits or the distribution of individual games. And uh, over the Man Mandela month, we managed to distribute 180 coding kits, as well as 1,400 games to schools through or throughout South Africa to all nine provinces. This is an integral part of the project to get corporates to buy into the value of the project. As important as sponsoring partners are also our implementation partners. partners. We obviously hope to have the biggest proportion of implementation partners being schools. But often the school teachers are so busy with the existing curriculum that we also realize that we need other partners. Joburg libraries have been very effective in introducing uh, tanks coding to uh, learners that attend their libraries and uh, Cape Town libraries have just joined. Uh, but then we we're very reliant on NGOs in the communities where they do great work to introduce coding to learners. To conclude, we, we strongly believe that the, the, one of the main purpose or objectives of this project is to expand the career horizons of learners. Those thousands and millions of learners at our schools that have no access to computers often have no concept of careers in software development or computing. And by introducing them to coding in the unplugged way, the least that we can do is to add to their dreams for careers. This becomes another option which they can consider after matric. The excitement is mounting. It will help me when I want to work at VW so that I can program the, ro the robots there at VW. Hi. I'm Bushe Pikoli from Cowan High School. Um, this is my final year metric. The Game Tanks has basically helped me with the choice after metric, what am I going to do? Uh, I've ta I'm taking a strong consideration to doing programming. Like, since programming is something that talked to me, which, that was something I never like really took in consideration before. I've always had a thing for computers, but it was never something I weighed heavy on. But after tanks, 
um, yeah, <laughs> that happened. Wesley Piccoli played Tanks on Mandela Day 2018 when he was in grade 10. This video was taken in January 2019. He is now busy with his uh, second year in Diploma of Software Development and so far he's passed with mainly distinctions. So this kind of story makes us very excited. I'm now available for questions and thank you very much for the privilege of sharing uh, this with you.